Next presenter is Mr. Uh, Mano Daniel. Mano is an architect and uh, uh, his concept is Chennai Centre for Performing Arts which he has christened as Kalai Arangam. My wife Meena and I run an architectural practice in Indra Nagar uh, My opinion, which other people might not share, is that the venues we have for these performing arts are both not right in scale for what we need today and with outdated technology. Next slide, please. So, when cities are confident about themselves, they build large public projects. It used to be religious buildings in no earlier days. Now it is transport terminals, hospitals, cultural centers, and so on. And when I compare what we have in Madras and feel that it is not good enough, it is because of what is there in the rest of the world. Let's have a look at some of those examples. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Everybody, many people can recognize the image of the Sydney Opera House. And this was done. The dates are there for these buildings on the slides. It was started, the design was started in 57. It was completed in 73. Next slide. Many people know this. Next slide. Well, it has become a cultural icon, not just for Sydney, the city, but it is what represents Australia to the rest of the world now. That is what is meant by a building becoming a cultural icon. Next slide. This is the interior, which was not very good for acoustics when it was first done, so they remodeled it. Next one. This is the Berlin Philharmonic Hall, which was done, which was started, the planning started in the early, late 50s, thank you, late 50s, and it was completed in the early 60s, and this was one of the first halls where modern acoustic engineering design was uh, uh, the primary factor in designing the form of the building. Next slide. <coughs> And this was in the early 60s, remember. Next. Next. This still is one of the greatest of auditoriums in the world. Next, please. Next. Okay, this is a cultural center built in Paris in the 70s, which has uh, which, uh, different things like museums, library, exhibition space, and so on. Next slide, let's see the picture. Next slide, please. But this is what the architects were trying to say was what the 1970s, this is the world in France, in Europe in the 1970s. So it's an image of what they and other people consider that the city wanted to say, this is what we are now. Next slide, please. Next. This is, in my opinion, the, uh, the greatest architect of the last 100 years, one of his designs. Let's go on to this. Uh, oh, hold on a minute. You'll see uh, the building areas, the seat capacities of halls. They, it's a good representation of what we should have. Next slide, please. This is what is possible today. If this was built 15 years ago. This is what is possible today. Next one. Yes, go on. Well, I mean, there's no words to describe what somebody can do. Next one. Okay, this is a smaller hall for dance. Next one. It's in a college in the US. This is the interior. This is a concert hall in Los Angeles, the same architect, Frank Gehry. And hold, hold the slides a minute, please. Uh, Frank Gehry designed the Bilbao Museum, the Guggenheim Museum in the Spanish city of Bilbao. And Bilbao was a small, is a small city. And it's a similar kind of very metamorphic form for the museum building. And th this was completed about 15 years ago. And since then, Bilbao has had tourists coming in large numbers primarily to see the museum building. Next slide, please. A dance theater, we are designed by two uh, Swiss architects who the 
West Bengal government, not the current government, which you cannot describe as a government, the previous one commissioned to design a science center, science museum in Calcutta. They produced the design, but naturally, in the way things work in India, the government changed, so it's not going forward. Next one. Next, another cultural center with auditoriums, various capacities. Next slide. We don't have to adopt any of these building forms or materials blindly in India. We have a completely different set of circumstances, climate, culture, everything. But this is an example. All those are built of wood. It is an approximation. It is not a replica. It is a symbolization of what their native buildings are. Next slide, please. So it is not only a functional space, it is also a cultural symbol. Next slide. And China, ever since its recent prosperity, has been, Chinese cities have been commissioning cultural centers, museums, science centers, at a term, tremendous rate. There have been at least 30 large urban projects built in China in the last 15 years. Next slide. Next. Next one. Uh, go back. This is an uh, uh, auditorium in Japan, designed by a Japanese architect. Next one. Okay. Next. The next slide, please. It, next one. So you can see that the interiors is not just the forms of the outside. It's the interiors also are getting more and more sophisticated. There's another design by Santiago Calatrava. And uh, the, uh, it's a complex of buildings with museums, exhibition centers, and so on. Go on. Next slide. Next slide. And unlike, hold on, unlike Madras Airport, here the glass panes don't fall off and the ceiling doesn't fall down on your head. Okay. Next slide, please. Next one. Okay. Now, the, uh, the issue is, we, like I said, we have all these forms of performing arts and I don't think we have the right buildings for them in 2030. Go on. Next slide. So... For convenience sake, I, instead of calling it cultural center every time, I thought I'll call it Kalayarangam. So these are the kind of spaces that we'll need. And I'm mentioning not just one auditorium, but a complex of auditoriums. Concert halls. Concert halls, as you can see on the slide, you need different kind of acoustic engineering for a large orchestra and a different kind of environment for a small chamber group. And then we have so many different sorts of music in India and all of them so far no, none of us have sat down and worked out exactly what kind of engineering would fit those best. An opera house, I don't think we are going to be putting on operas from Russia in Madras too often but there are so many Indian kind of dance and drama productions which are the kind of things which they stage in an opera house. Uh, dance theatres, I don't have to say anything, in India we have hundreds of different varieties of dance. Next slide please. And we'll need a library and an archival centre. And we need, we are a tropical country, we should be spending a lot of our recreational time outdoors. So we should have outdoor stages and pavilions. We should have things like food courts, bars, restaurants. And most important, we should not have VIP entrance only. We should all have parking to one side and uh, the rest of the outdoor landscape spaces should be pedestrian only. Next slide, please. So this, obviously, projects on this scale are ne uh, cannot even be attempted by private, uh, private funding. So you need government funding, you need government land. And, but a, lot, a great many of these kind of projects, the uh, cities have also asked for and got private endowments to help with it. That, that's a significant thing because not only 
Does it actually make the project happen? But it also creates a sense of ownership for all of us when it is done with your involvement in it. Next slide. Uh, I don't even want to think about how much it would cost, but I know that it can cost nothing less than $100 million, which is about 1,000 crores. Next slide. And for the site, for the location, I can't think of anything better than island grounds. It's government land. It's large. We don't have to use up all of it. It's served by all the public transport available. And uh, like I've written, if the coom is ever cleaned up, it has, provides a very nice river front. Next slide. And this is, as an architect, key for me. This cannot be done if we leave it to the usual government way of doing it. It has to be done by one of those men who designed those buildings that we saw earlier, or their younger contemporaries. And uh, unlike uh, in other jobs where, as architects, we always want a job to be tendered, that the government gives it up for open competition, which doesn't happen in Indian government building in much anyway, this is one job where I would like to nominate the architect. Next slide. And if I was nominating, those are the names I would pick. Next slide. Okay. In, you know how things get done in India. You know, before the uh, architect has even been told to design something, the completion date is announced for the building. And the next thing they do is go lay a foundation stone. You can't do a public project of this scale on, the, uh, on that basis. It has to be done the way do it elsewhere. Next state. Okay, so time schedule. Uh, you might have seen that a lot of those buildings, the dates written, they took more than 5, 10, 15 years to design and build. That's the time that it needs to get this done. And I don't know how feasible this is or how realistic it is. But uh, Suman asked for big ideas, and I think this is a very big idea. Thank you.